My name is Patrick, I'm a tech enthusiast and I'm going to be sharing with you some of the things that I find exciting in the world of tech as well as some really unique builds. So I've got a couple of things that I've made already and I'm going to show a few pictures of those. So we have here a steampunk computer which I built with my son Tally. Um, it is an old writing desk that we found in our local market. Uh, and we thought, well, what can we do with this old writing desk? And that's where this idea came from, to turn it into a computer. I had uh, already uh, an old motherboard from uh, an old HP machine, which I had since stripped the innards out of and put them into my uh, workstation, which I have in the office. Now, what I didn't have a year ago is a proper workshop to actually do this stuff. So I took over our kitchen. Here's a picture of that. Uh, and our kitchen was then, uh, well, it looked like this for a while. I was not my wife's favourite person for a few weeks. And then, uh, having finished that, we then had to do an upgrade of the computer system at my wife's medical practice. And uh, so, yeah, I took over the kitchen again with the server build. After that, I thought, well, I've got to do a few more of these things. And I found some really, really cool stuff, which I'm going to be turning into computers. Uh, over the course of these videos. So, for instance, I have here a small, it's actually polycarbonate, I think, but it's really, really nice, uh, sort of it's aged effect to it. It's all plastic and polycarb, but I thought that could be quite a cute little computer in there. And I also have, this is a whole unboxing session here. I've got all sorts of things. Right, in this box here, I've got some really cool stuff. A Raspberry Pi, a lead, and these little boxes. So these are cute little boxes which come from, uh, the, well, the works, actually. My plan with these is I'm going to make one of them, and the kids are going to do another one, and we're going to stick the Raspberry Pi inside. But I need to make the box up for them first, of course, and it's this. Right, so we're all good to go. As well as that, we have... There we go. Move that out of the way. Uh, this box, all sorts of pretty cool stuff in here. So there is a, an SSD. We have a, an, oh, there we go, the 4590S, a Radeon Pro WX3200, some RAM, a drive cage, and some standoffs for a motherboard, power supply, Here's the stand, more standoffs. Oh, yeah, essential little testing gadget. And in here, in this little box, we have and the best way to show you this to you guys. So here is a Haswell motherboard. Uh, which I've fitted that 4590S to already uh, to test it. Now I've got a video of that which I will show you now. generation old computer. Now it's very straightforward, I had lots of the bits hanging around, CPU etc, and so I picked up the motherboard cheap off eBay and I'm going to use it as a test bench. Now I've got an ITX board because this particular one is designed for this. This is an old pipe box and inside there was a little there we go. So inside here, there was a little bracket on the side, and then around the, all of this stuff here, because this can all come out. Um, yeah, a little drawer, whatever. So this can all come out, and we'll be left with a tiny little box that I can put an ITX system in. Now, there are various other 
uh, things that I need to do to this box to make it work. It needs a little bit of TLC. You can see there's a, a bit of a mark on the top here. And uh, there's nowhere at all for cables or cooling. So I'll need to think of something to do with that. I have a plan, I'm gonna start work on it. There'll be lots of cutting and drilling and all sorts going on. And we're gonna come back to this once I've got the case ready to put some components inside. What I need to do first really is get these uh, hinges off so I don't stand too much of a chance of damaging this glass. Now we're left with our box. Now there's a big problem with this box. This little fella here is right in the way of me getting a motherboard in here and also where I need to cut the back off so that we can uh, create a little place for the IO shield. So what we're going to do is knock these out. Um, I think we're going to be cutting this out, sadly. I really didn't want, I wanted to keep it because it's a really useful little bit of wood for other parts of this project, but I fear I need to cut down just the sides, just far enough that I can nip through these, uh, through these pins. Right, let's get some slightly more substantial kit out and we'll see where we go from there. Rather amazingly, this actually smells of pipe tobacco still. He's out. He's out. Right, now. There he is. I can pull him out now. A bit of manual sanding. Ah. Now, the whole of this will need sanding. I've also got this annoying little damage bit here that needs to come off. And then the whole of this will be sanding so that the paint can take, because I'm going to be putting some matte black paint on the inside. None of that's going to stick uh, unless I just gently rough up uh, the inside. Here is our box, which is now pretty much ready to go. We need to take a back panel off this and a piece at the bottom for the I.O. Take that off. When our board goes in here, it's going to be sitting yay, like this. So what we need to do is cut a panel out the back there and then all of our cables will come in underneath at the back and then plug in to these sockets as they are there. So I need to leave enough room on the on the side here for the GPU. Whether I put this centrally or just to the side, we'll see which one works best and how far up as well, because we want to have enough room to be able to get to our clips at the top here on the ATX power supply. So this will need to come down a fraction, just so there's enough room to actually get in there and then point with just a screwdriver to pull that out and make sure there's enough room on the side here for the GPU to go in. I managed to get hold of one of these. Now, these are not available everywhere, but I managed to find one online. They are a new card that came out towards the end of the last year in the WX range of Radeon Pro cards. It's absolutely tiny. Its speed is faster than an Intel integrated graphics. It's not gonna win any awards for blistering speed in many cases, but for a graphics card to go in a sub 200 watt unit, this should be pretty zippy. And here he is. So, as you can see, compared to most powerful graphics cards, he's absolutely tiny. So this little fella here will quite easily fit in our case. I'll be using this with its low-profile adapter, which is just in the, in the bottom of this box here, which we'll find that later. But here we are, just for the time being, I can show you how it will sit in here. So this will go into the bottom of this case there. Oh, let's line him up nicely. I won't slot him on fully now because I don't have anything to support it. But as you can see, this card will fit in any ITX build. Very, very low profile. 
uh, like that, obviously with the low profile brackets attached. So to make this box work, we need some kind of way to attach our IO to the bottom and support our riser card there. So what we have is an off the shelf, in this case, brand new in win chassis. Now, normally I would try and get a second hand uh, case for this because all I need on the back is that mounting plate uh, so we can fit our IO shield and our uh, PCI Express card into the unit. So let's take a look at this. Now this is the cheapest, literally the cheapest case that I could find when I was shopping around for this. I'm just hoping that I can take the back off it without too much trouble. So here's the little fella, quite a dinky little box and it's got a few accessories. Look at that. He even supplied it with uh, an EU plug, so thanks for that, Inwin. Yep, that's the only one, and in fact, it does come with a power supply. Uh, I did not expect that, so that could be really handy for a future project. Right, let us get into this fella. Catch is there, and the whole, whole panel just slides off like so. And in here we have a drive cage just here and there's a very cheap and nasty fan and a relatively cheap and nasty PSU. <clears throat> the bit that I really want though is up here. Yeah. Right so the reason I chose this case is because it is exactly the width that I need for my box. It only has room for an ITX board inside and just one PCI expansion slot. And what I'm going to be doing is drilling out this rivet here and I will be then cutting down the edge here just past where the power supply is and that should be just the right width to fit in my box. Uh, lovely though this cheap case is and it is surprisingly solid in fact. Um, I, would, I would say it's, it's pretty rigid uh, for a cheap case of somewhere around 25-30 pounds um, including a power supply. It's a pretty decent case for what it is um, but I'm going to be cutting it to pieces so Sorry, Ian Wynn. Here we are with our metal plate, which we cut out of the in-win case. And I'm just gonna try, try this in here, just offer it up to make sure that everything's going to fit when it's in the case. So there's my points there, nicely lined up with all the screw mounts. So that is fine. If we go in there, we should be fine. I'm just gonna try this as well. <coughs> this is how new this was off eBay claimed to be new, I thought, oh, you know, you never know. Uh, and then when it actually arrived, uh, I opened it all up and everything was sealed. This was still sealed in its packet. So I do actually trust them when I thought it was new. I'll be sitting in a warehouse or something for a few years. Right, so we'll take this and then we'll stick it onto here. Make sure we're getting it in the right way round. There he is. Yep. He sits in there nicely and then I've got myself a tiny bit there which I might need to make some space for but if you can see that uh, if I line this up just right you'll see that the there's a bit of overlap between the back plane which is fine because I'm going to be slotting that in a bit of overlap between that and the side here anyway let's just check all this fits so we're going to now mark up where this is going to sit inside this case. So to, in order to make sure that I get this spot on, we're going to mount the motherboard just temporarily. There it is. There. Right. Now the important thing here is that the motherboard sits inside this metal base, which it does. So if I just um, Move this to the side, as you can see, there we are. So inside this metal base, 
right there, if I just put this directly under the camera, you can see there's a couple of millimeters, just a little bit, around the edge, all the way around, just enough that the motherboard isn't going to be touching the sides of the of the case and making sure that I, if I put this, if I want to, right up against the top edge of the box and it will still have enough room for the clip on our power supply. Just so that I can be absolutely certain uh, that this is going to fit nicely, I do have a power supply here. I'm going to attach it just to there to be sure that it's going to fit. So what I really wanted to do with this is get this as far up to the top of this case as I can so that all my I.O. can go out the bottom without having to use lots of bendy special bracketed wires. We can just take a normal wire and there should be just enough room for an ordinary wire to bend round underneath inside here. One of the issues we have with this case is cooling. Uh, the back panel has this little array of holes here which will be okay uh, but we do need to somehow draw some air in elsewhere. So I'm going to be having a look to see whether there's any way that we can bring in some air from maybe at the side somewhere, a couple of thin slits just to allow a little bit of airflow in. Uh, and then I'm going to have some active cooling on here, um, maybe make a couple more holes along here so that I can get uh, a full four centimetre fan in there. And I think that'll help uh, a lot with our cooling. Don't be away from there. Not a lot. And I put a piece of tape on here <coughs> so I know what depth I'm going to. It's only three millimeters, so I've got to be super careful that I don't go any deeper than that. All right, it's going to get noisy.
Okay, so I now have a few more bits ready to go. The box is coming on nicely, and now we're going to look at some of these components that are going to be going into it and preparing some of those. So for the cooler for this small uh, case, I've got this little fella here, uh, who should hopefully look quite cool through the window. It's quite clever, it has a massive heat pipe up the middle, and then surrounded by fins all around the side. I'll just take it out of here. So there we, oh, there we go. Huge heat pipe that goes right up the middle. Can't quite see it from here, it's got a picture on the box. Uh, and then these fins that go all the way around the, the side. So all you see is this sort of flying saucer kind of thing through the window of the box. And inside we have moisture absorber. Uh, more importantly, all the fixings that we could possibly need for different mountings. Now I'm using a fourth gen Intel CPU, so I will need to dig out the correct one of these for that. It's got a back plate to go on the bottom and all the fixings that we're going to need. It even has, if I take this out because you won't be able to see it in the reflections, a very good cooler master. They give you everything you might possibly need for lots of different mountings and they also give you a tiny little pod of thermal compound as well. So we have a slight change of plan for the GPU. Uh, this fella is going to come out and we have a very slightly different one coming in in its place. I say very slightly different. Uh, it's the older next model up. The replacement model is a 4100 uh, simply because this model doesn't work on Mac OS. Uh, and if I ever want to be running this with Mac OS, then I'm gonna need a card that works. So. Okay, so here we are. We now have our box. Okay, it's still in pieces, but this is because we need to put it all together now. Having cut holes in the box, this piece of tape was holding this on, uh, I've cut holes in the box, I've checked everything out, everything fits, I've got one last thing that I need to cut in and I need to work out exactly where it's going to go. Uh, here's our graphics card, just there, and the SSD, and our power supply, and some odd accessories, and just some screws which I need later on. Uh, and as you can see, the inside of the box is now black, so everything, hopefully, as far as possible, will be tucked away. I have bound up cables and wires that I don't need in heat shrink sleeving, and I can tuck those away down here. Uh, the only really annoying thing I've got is these cables. These are the uh, USB 3 cables, which are going to go on the side here. It's huge. It's I can't even gesture how wide it is. It's about a metre long, uh, maybe a bit less. So I've had to snake it up inside uh, underneath the fan here. It'll break some of the airflow, but not too bad. Here's our power supply connector. It takes 12 volts in from the bottom here and then takes it up to this board. What I can show you is underneath here. There we go. So we now have a bronze effect on the bottom of the, of the case here with uh, our motherboard loosely fitted, so I'm gonna be very, very gentle with it. The GPU will go in there. I have two of these 40 millimeter Noctua fans. I'll take them out for the time being. We have two of these little fellas here who, which are gonna be pulling air through the bottom of the case when it's standing upright. And we have two air slits on the side there and one on the back and then another two over there. There we are. So there's our box all ready to go. Now, I had planned to put a false drawer at the bottom here, uh, which there used to be a drawer in the original case. So I was gonna put a false drawer in, and then I realized that gave me 
the opportunity to put. I'm going to move this close to the camera, see if I can focus on it. Anyway, there we go. So we now have a lovely chrome power switch. There it is, which sits at the bottom of the case here. The cable goes straight into the top of the case and will be fed round to there. So this goes under here, clips onto there, right, and then a couple of screws go in the bottom to hold it in place. I'll be honest, I'm quite surprised at how neat that has ended up because uh, there's a lot of stuff to squeeze into a very, very small box. I nearly gave up on those USB ports, hence why I haven't cut them in yet. Um, but I think they're going to work. Uh, I'm now going to get on with um, fitting out these USB ports in the side, uh, cutting out a small portion of the box, hopefully no bigger than that square shape there, uh, to put these through the, through the side here. And then we can begin assembly. So here is the finished case. Now completely painted black on the inside. It has its vent holes, a hole for the USB ports on the side. It now has a catch to keep the door closed and it's ready for the door to be reattached with its original hinges. It also has the whole of the frame in there ready for the ITX board there. So here's our board uh, as I, I believe I've mentioned previously, uh, my cables are huge. They're really, really long. Uh, so I'm having to snake these underneath. Not great for airflow, but it's the best solution I have uh, short of making one of these from scratch. This is for the USBs on the side panel. Uh, I took this piece of wood actually from the old box. It was a part of the old drawer um, and we've cut it out to the right size, fitted the USB sockets in through the side here uh, and they're screwed through on this face just there. Right. Everything else here is uh, ready to go. I've heat shrink sleeved uh, bundles of cables to keep them more tidy when they're in the case. And we have our two little tails here for the fans. So um, this fella goes in the side there. So there we go, USB ports. This, by the way, is really, really satisfying. Um, so just pretty much by chance, this piece of wood here, mounted on there, has made the USB ports completely flush with the surface of the box on the outside, which is extremely satisfying. Oh, very conveniently, the case that I cannibalized this from, uh, the insides of this from, uh, has some little rubber feet, so they can go on the bottom when we're finished as well. Right, we are ready to do this last little job. So I pull this out of the way, don't need this just a second. On the bottom here. Now our airflow is in through the back and through the sides, just here, and it comes out through the bottom of the case, um, just through these fans here. There's a vent here. If I leave that vent open, it's going to end up drawing air just in through that vent, out through the fans, and all that will happen is just be circulating, circulating air just in this small area. So I need to block this panel off. Um, and all I'm going to do to do that, I'm just going to get a little bit of wood and attach it on the back there. And I want it to be black. I have a tiny bit of black paint left. That should be just enough to do the trick. So I need my little fans, my little 40 mil fans. Pop one in there and one in there, just to check how much clearance I have. I've had a few extra things I've done today, just notably filling in little holes uh, where the original case I had to cut into for him to get this piece in here and so on. So there's one finished box ready to take the motherboard. Now one of the issues that I had with this very very carefully as I put the motherboard in I need to pull the little metal springs out of the way on the IO shield. As I slide the board in, I have to get under these little springs here. I'm also very, very conscious that I could end up scratching paint, and I don't really want to do that if I can help it. Okay, there we go, we're in. Now I need to line up with the first set of springs. 
you know, the, the worst one, the hardest one of these, is the the very bottom. There's a uh, HDMI one, and he was very very tricky to get into place on the test run. He just kept wanting to go in. Has he gone in? <laughs> I thought that might happen. So, uh, very frustratingly, it's gone in absolutely beautifully, except that the HDMI spring has gone into the HDMI port. So I'm going to come back out again, back out again, and then realign that. And we're in! Right, there we go guys. So, uh, he's in there. If I tip this up the right way, you can see. Oh, apart from the shade from my window. There you are. All of the ports are in the right place. So, the next thing is to attach the motherboard to the base of the case. I was trying not to rhyme. I couldn't help it. There we go. There we are. I have a nifty little tray, magnetic tray, so I can just pull out the right screws from here. So we're now going to take this screw and pop them down here. This extension arm shaft is in fact magnetic. Yeah, I missed the thread just then, you saw me bring it back out and put it back in again. Um, if you have to apply too much pressure to get a screw to go in, uh, then it's very likely uh, that you've, you've just missed the thread slightly. So just pull back a little bit, give it a wiggle, and you can usually get the, this screw to go in uh, much more easily. None of these screws should be difficult to get in. And you'll notice I'm not even using a full screwdriver here, I'm just using the extension piece. And actually, you don't need to apply any more pressure than you can get on, on one of these. And in it goes. That's as tight as that needs to go. That's all it needs. There we go. That's in place. The next job is to fit the fans onto the base. And these are my little Noctua 40 mil fans. Two of these pushing the air outwards. It's gonna suck it in through the sides at the top and the back. There's a tiny little slit at the back of the motherboard. It's gonna pull the air around the back there and then pull it through the case and through the bottom. Try to make these look as good as possible, they are going to be visible. If this was on the outside of the case, I would probably be tempted to rejig this and have the flow the other way simply so I don't have to see the logo. But actually, this on the bottom of the case, there's also something to be said for slightly showing off if you've got. Um, a really nice component like these Noctua fans. You know, just be proud of, of using, using something snazzy like high grade components. I have been painting all my other screws. I haven't painted these ones, but chrome doesn't really clash with anything. Here he is. I want to have the Noctua brand facing the same way both sides you see okay two fans in place let's get this one connected up and tucked down the bottom there there's space for it, that's all good. So this goes on here, like this, which is quite cool. You open the little door, and there's your power button. So he has a cable which goes through. This is um, custom made, so I had a, a nice neat black wire. Um, and this, this tucks in here through this tiny, tiny little slit. Just 
ですね。Others around the side, and here this will tuck underneath the fan. There, and through the side, and then I'll have great fun trying to get it to go onto the header at the back. I will work on that and come back to this later. Okay, so here we are. I've removed this panel. I just unscrewed it just to loosen it a bit uh, so that I can get the card in. Because in fact, just underneath this, if I can show you, there's a small bracket. Can't really see it in this light. Small bracket which comes up and closes down over. Let's see if I can explain anything. Well. That closes down over the graphics card on the outside. So I've just undone that so that I can get that in. Here's the card. There's a very particular way to get this to go in. It's a bit fiddly. There we go, he's ready to go in. He tucks underneath the end of the graphics card when he goes in. Right, so now we take the graphics card, which is rather splendid Radeon Pro. WX4100 Reflecting lovely blue everywhere It is a very snug fit, but it does go, it does fit I've got little pads on the SSD so he sits in there and he doesn't move, he's, he's quite sturdy in there and the added advantage here is that any heat from here will get transferred into the metal casing of the card and there's an, there's an airflow that comes from the back of the card through to here and it'll be pulling air past the SSD at the back, running it through the inside of the card and pushing the air out of the top here which hopefully they can get sucked out of the case by this uh, small fan here. So what we've actually got is a relatively decent airflow um, past this part of the case and there's a slit right at the top here where the air can be drawn in for the card. So now this little flap goes back down. Yeah. Lovely, so he's nice and secure in there. I have my little blanking plate here, which is just a little bit of, well, it's a bit more of that wood from the wood was a drawer here and this is just going to block off those extra air vents underneath here Doo -doo. just there this will block on the inside obviously this will block those off so we don't get any excess uh, airflow going the wrong way I've drilled the holes where it will be screwed in and what I've done here is done it by hand very very gently just because it's taken so little away you can just do it totally by hand and then I thread it using one of the screws that I'm actually going to be screwing into it from the other side. And so I'm just going to thread this one as well, tapping the uh, thread into it. You can do this on metal as well, uh, but sometimes if the metal's tougher than the screw you're using, you need to use an actual tapping die. And there we go, so now we have both holes are tapped and ready to receive the screws when I put it in the other side. This needs a little bit of a clean from all my fingerprints and then it can go onto the inside and block those air vents. So all together then, that's not looking too bad. I now have to make sure that we have our power supply mounted on the reverse of the door just here. That'll get screwed onto there.
Since I finished making this video, this is actually sold on Etsy and the customer asked for a few little upgrades. So check this out. <laughs> 